welcome to the 64th episode of Nina and Knitting. My name is Nina and I live in Jyväskylä in central Finland with my husband, our two kids and a dog. Today is Thursday, uh, November 5th and uh, I'm at home. I'm recording indoors because it is fall in here and uh, well, the lighting I always mention about the lighting. Sorry, it is what it is. Um, there are a couple of video clips that I will have, or I took yesterday, and one of them I will have put at the at the beginning of this episode, and uh, the other one I'll put at the end. Um, it was yesterday about nine, nine-ish, um, or actually it was between eight and nine a.m. Um, that also was kind of a gray day, but I just took some video to 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 show some outdoors <laughs> in this episode. Uh, it's been quite a while since I last recorded uh, but um, that's that's life the lighting is an issue free time free moments to uh, record are another issue and this episode is a compilation of smaller videos and it's not how I prefer to do it but well, that's that's how it's going to go now. And I I should just just you know own it, <laughs> just accept it that that's how it's going to be, and and uh, maybe uh, I'd get stuff out uh, more often than I do right now. Yeah, but um, since it's been a while, I have quite a few finished objects. Uh, I have uh, three to four uh, whips. One of them is currently a whip or haven't, hasn't been uh, five, just haven't been given the finalizing touches. But by the time I get this video edited and uploaded, it may very well be an FO. I'll show it to you at the very first, uh, as the very first web, so you'll you'll know know what I'm talking about. But yeah, let's get this show on the road or something. Here's the first videos. Now, if you ever wonder about why I need so so many socks. <clears throat> Here's a reason. This amazingly beautiful pattern is called Flutter by Butterfly. It's by Adrian Fong, who uh, passed away last year. And um, look how amazingly beautiful it is. Uh, in real life, their stripes don't look quite as uh, striking as they are on camera, but you probably know about that. Uh, the yarn here is a new to me yarn, Bis. Uh, it is um, from Bor Bor Borgo de Pazzi, Florence, Firenze. Um, and it's 75%, I think. Let's, let's just check, yes. 75% superwash wool, 25% polyamide, and there are about 420 meters in 100 grams. Oops, <laughs> upside down. Um, the colorway, it's a number. Where is it? I saw it. Uh, 321. But yeah, it's this one, like, orangey, two different tones of orange. Uh, 
as it is sort of a Halloween season or Halloween is approaching, even though Halloween isn't as big a thing here in Finland as it is in other countries, it's getting there, but it's not traditionally uh, anything big for us. Um, but yeah, I was trying to find something Halloweeny, and actually, I was trying. I went to the one of the local yarn stores, Neolosi, and I was looking for something orange and black, or orange and uh, purple. But this is this was the only like orange thing I could find, and for the pattern, um, yeah, I'm happy with my choice so this is a new to me yarn and these are the socks they weigh 60 grams the pattern is free on Ravelry uh, all Adrian Fong's uh, patterns are free but of course you can always uh, consider donating something for a good cause because you get this really, really beautiful, beautiful uh, pattern. It's a cuff down sock. I knit it on my 2.5 millimeter uh, Chagu needle circs. Um, that's US one and a half. And I, um, so I used 60 grams and thinking about the price of the yarn because it's not very expensive these socks are about six and a half euros the price of the yarn is about six and a half euros so that's pretty nice and i knit them two at a time on magic loop with uh with the needles and uh, it starts with a ribbing not just two by two but some other uh, number of, of uh, knits and pearls because they turn into this, this really beautiful motif. It's just, knit, like I said, knits and pearls and uh, yarn overs. There's instructions uh, how to do these one by one crosses of cables without a cable needle needle or anything it's a very handy trick and i've used it before so it, that was something i already knew but um uh, yeah it's nice that it's in the pattern so that you don't have to go online and try to look for for a trick for this because as you can see there are quite a few quite a few of those um those one by one cables or turns and in the heel flap because it's a heel flap and gusset sort of construction you have this <clears throat> cable going down on both sides of the heel flap and then uh, a french heel turn and then i picked up a number of stitches yeah the pattern told us to to pick up some number i didn't really uh, look at that i just picked up enough to get a neat um neat edge here at the heel on both sides of course and then gusset decreases and then making this this um uh, motif at the front of the sock there is a little bit of a blip or something that doesn't belong in there in this sock but who's gonna look at look at it uh, that closely but yeah and then of course after you've sort of finished finish the center uh, motif then you have these cables going together in here it's very very pretty and then the rest of the uh, foot is plain stockinette before the toe decreases 
these are for for my niece i'll be putting them in in uh in the post later this week they are amazingly beautiful and talking about the niece something that her mother is getting for her birthday which was just um a few days ago uh i started something last summer and i mentioned it in, in a previous podcast i would made some cotton pads for this uh sister for her birthday and now now that her birthday is here or actually was already but i had uh talked that i'd uh put it all in the same post mail mailing package her birthday present uh her daughter's birthday present and some masks that i uh agreed to sew for them but i also made some more cotton pads this time i i used another um pattern a crochet pattern here they are <laughs> they are just tiny and cute so this pattern is called bell petal flower and the designer's name is Nastasia. It's a YouTube tutorial. And um, you start here in, in the middle. The, the middle yarn is Novita Miami. It's 50% uh, 50 cotton and 50% acrylic. Yes. Oh, and there are... 125 meters in 50 grams and then the other yarn here for the petals this is the wrong side of it so you make sort of a center thing with the yellow or i use the yellow and then you you join in another color to make the petals and this yarn i have left of both both of the colors this is novita Povila bamboo, which means cotton bamboo. So there's 40, no, 52% co cotton and 48% bamboo viscose. And I have two colors of it. And I made a few. I made, I actually made 10. Five of the lighter pink and then five of this darker pink color so these are like for uh, removing your makeup they're kind of small but I think they do the trick it doesn't need to be huge and if you didn't see my earlier podcast where I'd made the uh, the other cotton pads I do have them here with me but yeah 10 of these and then I have the the bigger ones the ones that I'd made before and I'll put the the name of the pattern on the screen and below below in the description bar but um, I have nine two four six eight nine yeah nine of these leaves and then I had sewn uh, a small basket fabric basket and I used uh, a blog uh, post to sew this and I can put a link to that uh, down below but yeah so they actually I, I made two of these I originally thought that this was too small so I made a bigger one but now I decided that actually this is better for for this um use so i'll show it to you when i put them all in the basket so here it is this is for my daughter uh, for my sister for my my younger sister who's very eco-friendly and i think she will appreciate it um the hook the crochet hook that i used for the flowers was 3.5 millimeter that's e the letter e and 
the flowers weigh 35 grams a total so about three and a half grams each i guess so yeah these are for my sister these oh, can i pick them up <laughs> these are for her daughter uh, her middle daughter so they will be going in the mail a bit later this week this was a really fun project to crochet. Uh, the pattern is called Baby Yoda Amigurumi. Uh, it's by Larissa Maist. Uh, her Instagram handle is uh, Be Friends Crochet. And I found it on Ravelry. Uh, it's a free pattern. Uh, it's really, really fun to crochet. I did it in two days. The yarns I used are really, really deep stash. I used a 4.5 millimeter hook and uh, the main color, main yarn is uh, Novita Rose, which is a 70% acrylic, 30% wool mix. I used it double. And then I had some um, safety eyes from a previous, well, I had bought some for for a previous project. This is the ball band for Novita Rose. Uh, it's a discontinued yarn, and uh, had uh, 190 meters in uh, 50 grams. But yeah, like I said, I used it double. Uh, you crochet the head and the body portion or body part at once and then you knit the ears the uh, arms and the legs which are in inside this jacket <laughs> so they were separate and then you stuffed everything and um, sewed it together and afterwards crocheted this jacket to the to the little creature <laughs> and um, the jacket yarn also was something from my very very deep stash also a discontinued Novita yarn I only had one ball of that, this color and it's Novita Cottonella and Novita Cottonella is um, oops, 112 meters in 50 grams and there's 54% uh, cotton and 46% acrylic in the Cottonella yarn so yeah this was really really fun uh, project to crochet and it's going in the mail today Right, then there is another project that I've made that I've crocheted. It's a dishcloth. <laughs> I uh, specifically went to a yarn store here in New Vascula called Neolosi. I wanted to find some yarn to make some dis 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 <laughs> dishcloths. And this is what I got. It's Alize, Alize uh, Bamboo Fine. It's 400 40 meters for 100 grams 100 percent bamboo viscose yarn and uh, it's this sort of the the colorway is like mixed uh, i think if you mm, knit it it'll be striped in some way but of course uh, in crochet especially crocheted in double like i did uh, it's, it looks different. I actually started it with just one yarn, uh, but uh, well, I made a mistake in the pattern, even though it was very easy to follow, if you know you really wanted to follow it. So this uh, pattern is called Mijo, Mijo, uh, dishcloth or washcloth by Johanna Lindahl. 
and um, it's something I found on Ravelry free a free pattern and uh, at first like I said I used just one strand of yarn and a 3.0 millimeter hook but because I wasn't really paying attention to the pattern or my crochet it started to go like this Woo. stupid <laughs> anyway and then I uh, decided that I actually didn't really like the way the yarn crocheted up uh, so I decided that okay I'm just gonna take one yarn from the inside of the ball and one from the outside and and crochet like this and that's what I did in here and this uh, for this one, I used 3.5 millimeter hook. That's E, the letter E, I think. Uh, in retrospect, I maybe could have used a 4.0 millimeter, but uh, well, the 3.5 was something that I had there, <laughs> so that's what I used. Um, it's a very, very simple pattern sort of uh, single crochets for one row and then double crochets uh, like crossed uh, on the second row and you know do that as long as you like uh, the way we can it's very easy to adjust the width and of course the height but yeah this this was just a little sort of a test run of of this uh, yarn and it, it turned out pretty okay I liked it I actually bought an, another one that's a solid yellow uh, I'll try and find some other uh, patterns for dish dishcloths and and uh, you know make some more maybe a little bigger this was maybe a little just a you know, could have been a few centimeters wider and, of course, longer than two. But it's fine. I, I'm sure I'll get some use out of it. Um, and then one thing that I finished is my sweater. I uh, Last time I showed it to you, I had almost uh, finished the body. I hadn't started the sleeves, but I'd almost uh, finished the body. There's just was I had started the ribbing of of the hem. I'm gonna get up in a just a sec, but I'm gonna show you the yarn first. So this is Dolly Garn Falk. It's a yarn that I've used before for a sweater for my daughter. It's 100% wool. A little um, dry and uh, maybe a little itchy we'll see how how you know what happens when I wear it a little more I have soaked it and blocked it so uh, it's sort of undergone one once a wash uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens. So I use, these are 50 gram balls and I used five of them. So there's uh, 450. No, I used five of them, I think. 250 grams, is it? No, I actually used nine. <laughs> I used nine because this is number 10 and I didn't even try to start this. So I used nine balls of this yarn. So that's 450 grams. And there are 212 meters in 100 grams. So 106 meters in, in this 50 gram ball. And, uh, oh, well, okay, let's just talk about the construction so you started from the neckline 
mine is the ribbing I did a provisional cast on for the neckline and then you have raglans with this really really nice uh, cable on both sides and then on one side ugh, the cables go straight down and you have some uh, reverse stock in it in between the cables sorry for the lighting it's horrible uh, it's the weather is terrible outside it's very gray it's very very windy um, so I just didn't want to go out now <laughs> but yeah so these are just straight down and then there is ribbing in the hem one by one ribbing and then on the, the other side <laughs> You swerve those uh, cables and then you split the hem. So you do this from uh, this on, you do it back and forth. And you continue with uh, the cables and then you make, uh, you know, sort of a, a lace to thread uh, between the cables. Um, and yeah, so I had, uh, I fi finished the body and then I need the sleeves. Uh, I don't remember how long she suggested to knit them in the pattern, but I just tried it on and, and, and I made the decreases, like trying it on and because and, I wanted to have sort of a fitted, uh, sleeve but not too too tight and then some ribbing i know that the ribbing here in the cuff is longer than in the pattern and for the neckline too uh it's the ribbing is longer than in the pattern um i wanted to have it really high on the back of the neck because that's when i where i get cold in the winter time, so I wanted to have uh, a neckline that's really close to to my um, neck to make it really warm. You make some shaping, some uh, short rows in the in the ribbing. Let's see if I can show it to you. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So I I. I uh, finished the neckline at some point before uh, knitting, even knitting the body. Uh, maybe I had done the neckline last time. I'm not 100% sure. But I wanted to have it ready when I uh, was trying on the sleeves so that I would really get uh, the length right. Yeah. So, and then, then there was the, the sort of a thread for the split um she had another kind of uh, um, cordy thing in her pattern i tried it but with my kind of knitting uh i didn't get it neat enough for me for my taste so i just decided to to make an i cord just a, for Four stitch I cord and I actually just finished the ninth ball of yarn with and see to see how long a cord I could make with that without uh, breaking into uh, another ball of yarn and I decided that yeah it's it's long enough to tie the split so that's that's okay and uh, the ribbing in the hem also is longer than in the pattern if i had followed the pattern uh the sort of the the end of the split here uh, probably would have looked better but i don't mind it's okay <laughs> it's okay it's fine it's fine like that uh did i mention the the needles i used so 4.5 millimeters for the ribbing and five 0 0.05.0 millimeters for the rest of the, the sweater 
4.5 is US 7 and 5 is millimeter is US 8, I think. And the, the size that I knit was large, size large. I think that's it for this. And then another finished object. Uh, although this one hasn't been blocked, it's the Slideways hat by Nathan Taylor. So this is double knitting, uh, where you have the inside of the, the project the same as the outside, just with the colors reversed. The yarn I used here is something that I think I bought in a supermarket. I'm not sure. It's uh, Nukel and Lanka, and uh, these names are actually I think the colorway names so Sophia and Amanda are the colorways perhaps this is uh, a DK weight yarn 200 meters in 100 grams and uh, it's 75 percent wool 25 percent uh, polyamide I, I I I bought them together because I thought they'd look fun but actually, mm, I'm not too crazy about how the brown one knits up. You can see it better uh, here. Well, it's sort of a, a tiger color. But I'm not too crazy about that. Luckily, I can use, use it like this. Or, well, I'm actually not sure if I'm going to keep this beanie. It's a bit a little big for me. Like I said, I haven't blocked it. Uh, I started with a, a needle that was a little too big. I think that I started with a 4.5 millimeter needle and just decided that no, it's not gonna it's not gonna look nice and just you know changed into a 4.5 millimeter needle. So for not for 4.0 millimeter needle, so that's US size six. And uh, and in the beginning, my knob double knitting isn't really very neat. Uh, I started this while I was uh, in a Zoom be along with Nathan, and um, he has a weekly Zoom be along. And um, uh, I had cast on, and I'd done like a few rows of this one colored stuff which is just one color in the inside and one color in the outside and um, uh, when I started doing these sort of motif kind of things uh, I just didn't want to you know stop being in the zoom be along and start reading the instructions which I perhaps should have but I didn't uh, I just you know knit on it on and that's why he probably had instructions on how to make it uh, neater so that's why I think I might just soak it and sort of see how the stitches will you know lie after after being sort of when the after the the yarn relaxes in the bath but it's it's a fun pattern this is the best part of it this is really really pretty the crown of the hat but yeah so double knitting um is not difficult uh, but it took me a while to sort of get it right and this part is pretty okay especially uh, on the outside the side that i was sort of fit that was facing me when I was knitting it because of course the inside oh, okay it's not bad it's not bad there's a few things that I didn't really uh, didn't really uh, I wasn't paying it enough attention to to get the sort of switches Switch the, to switch the yarns the right way so that we wouldn't get these weird blimps of yarn poking through but 
since I prefer it this way anyway, it's going to be okay. But it's, it's a pretty hat. I'll just have to give it a bath and, and just sort of get rid of the bell-like shape because it's not what it's supposed to be. And like I said, uh, it's a little big for me. Maybe. But it'll be a really, really uh, warm hat because it has two layers of DK weight yarn. So if I'm not keeping it for myself, which is really possible, then somebody, whoever gets it, will really uh, have a warm hat for, for the winter. Even my gorgeous hair is all messed up. Yeah, but that's it. That's, uh, that's the beanie that I have uh, knit. Pretty happy with the, the result. Um, I do intend to try double knitting later again. I just have some stuff to do uh, during this fall. I think that I, well, I have an idea uh, of something that I'll do from the start of next year, but we'll see, see what happens. But there was a, it was a fun project, just that it, it, it is a little, well, it's, it takes longer than just knitting one layer because you you have double the amount of, of stitches. So, so, uh, it's, it, the progress is slower than, than with, with just like for this sweater, but it's pretty. And the fact that it can be reversed is kind of cool. Cool too. Okay, now uh, for the whips. The first one that I mentioned that's almost finished but not just quite uh, is a shawl and I used La Fefil yarn. Focus, focus. Not quite focus, but anyway. La Fefil. Uh, merino, nylon, light fingering, gradient. Uh, yarn. It's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and 425 meters in 100 grams. And uh, the colorway is called Aux Le Rose. I bought this uh, at Uvascular Niche Fest a few years ago. And uh, the pattern. <laughs> well, I finished the knitting yesterday. <laughs> it hasn't been blocked, as you can see. <laughs> uh, this pattern is called Shawl and Emma by Ali Aster, I think, of a Swedish designer. And it starts in here. You get these uh, holes at, uh, between the, the edge and the sort of body of the... the uh, shawl so you have a little bit of uh, stock in it then some holes and a bit of a mesh section here and then you have a section uh, uh, before this lace part uh, that's really curled up this, my friends, is why, why blocking is really important when you're making a shawl or anything with lace. <clears throat> yeah, let's just try and get it to show. Yeah, pretty much. So that's the lace part. The color is not quite as uh, pink. It, it's, it is pretty pink, yeah, hot pink in, in the edges. Um, but maybe not quite as much as it looks like in this light and on the, the screen. Um, 
I'm not 100% sure why I chose this yarn when I bought it because this kind of pink is maybe really not my thing. But this is the shawl that I'm going, uh, that I actually knit for uh, a little girl who's turning three this month. And now that I've finished knitting it, it's, it's not a big shawl. It's one of those one skein wonders. It's not even my wingspan. Let's see. Well, just about. So I'd say about uh, a meter and a half wide. <laughs> but see how it does when I, when I pull it, curls up like this. <laughs> I hope blocking will help with this. But yeah, so um, a little girl who's is uh, turning three this month. So I, I knit this for her because she's a really girly girl. So I think she'll she'll like it. And uh, I just weighed this. Uh, this weighs 75 grams. I think I made this section just a tad bit shorter than it could have been or that was in the pattern, but I I just wanted to get to the lace section because I, I, I enjoy that more than plain stocking it. <laughs> but since I, um, I got, I had some yarn left, I didn't know how much. I just knew that once I had um, bound this off, uh, I'm gonna give it a bath and and lay it to to block, you know, pin it down so that I can block it and then weave in the ends. Um, but, uh, I had a bit of the yarn left, just a tad bit more than this now. And, uh, I didn't weigh it. I just, okay, mm, I could try and make some sort of a beanie out of it, maybe. And then I went on Ravelry. So Shawl and Emma, uh, just let me go back to the... To this <laughs> this is a free pattern on Ravelry I just went on Ravelry uh, did the search put in um, lace weight shawl one skein or zero to four hundred meters or something and I think that those were the parameters that I used uh, and yeah more or less and then I just scrolled them and decided okay this will probably do the trick so this is a free pattern and then since I had yarn left uh, and I think okay I'll just make a beanie maybe if I have enough yarn <laughs> uh, and then I went on Ravelry put in a beanie fingering weight yarn finger light fingering and Mm, I, I think I chose age group because she's going to be three so for somebody who is about three years old uh, and I started yesterday uh, I was using 4.0 millimeter needles for the shawl that's US size 6 these are uh, 3.0 millimeter mid pro symphonies and this is 3.0 millimeter is US size two and a half. DPNs, I have six in the packet, like there is, often is, I guess. Um, and I have just started. It starts with a garde section and then you get some lace. And I have no idea if this is gonna fit her. I don't know the circumference of her head, no idea. I saw her uh, last May, 
I could, of course, ask her parents to measure her head, but I probably won't. But I'll I'll see what the what kind of a what size of a hat this makes. Uh, since the shawl is seventy five grams, I only have twenty five grams about left and that's about a hundred meters just over 100 meters and in the pattern 100 meters is size baby or something so it is very probable that i will run out of yarn but we'll cross the bridge once we get there um maybe i won't or if I do, I'll just try and figure something out. What I think I would have liked to do is um, hold this double with a mohair. And I was thinking white. But uh, I just wanted to start it yesterday. And so I don't have white mohair. I don't, don't think I have any kind of mohair at home. Or at least nothing that will go together with this color. Uh, <clears throat> but I would have liked to have more hair to go with the fingering. Like a lace weight mohair yarn to go with the fingering. So that it would make a little bit thicker beanie. Because it's November. It's bound to get colder and fingering weight hats aren't that uh, warm but then again she lives in the southern Finland maybe they'll have some warmer days I don't know we'll see what happens with this one but <clears throat> as you can see I just started it uh, so far so good with the pattern uh, didn't mention the name though <laughs> Floralis <clears throat> by Gabrielle Donsknit is the name of the pattern, but you really can't see anything from here. Maybe you'll see it finished next time, or then I'll tell you that I had to rip it back and do something else. Not that I really need to make anything else for her. I mean, a shawl will be just a fine, it will be enough for a birthday present but uh since i have le this yarn and this much left i would really like to you know do something with it because what will i do with a yarn of this color so, and besides it, it would match the shawl so you know many many reasons why this is a good idea We'll just see how it goes. So these are, and this is my sort of the most current, the newest whip. And the shawl is something that possibly once I get this uh, video edited and ready to upload, <clears throat> I hope I will have uh, already blocked this and will have some photos to show you yeah i'll do that I'll start the blocking just after i get this <laughs> recording done okay so there is this tv show that we've had in finland for a few years it's a tv format that i think is not originally from finland it's from some place else um and well, but it's been done in different countries and the idea is that there are singers i think seven and each of them have their own day and the six others uh will make their own versions of this one person's songs that's the idea uh i really like it i think it's great fun and uh this year i happened to notice uh, a knit along going around this tv concept so the the tv show is called vanilla mine finish and um the idea of the cow is that you have uh 
different yarn, different uh, color for each singer. And uh, one, when the singer is singing, you knit that color in your socks. And uh, so here are my socks or <laughs> the start, start of it. I don't have a pattern for this one, of course. Uh, I just uh, cast on, I don't remember, maybe eight stitches or something. I hadn't planned it at all. I just started it when the, when the, sh the first uh, episode of the, the series started this year. And uh, I didn't even check any, any other uh, sock patterns that I've previously knit. So uh, I've tried them on. So there are 64 stitches now. They fit. <laughs> But of course, they're very colorful. Uh, I'm using this yarn uh, at the base. I don't know if I have the ball band in here somewhere. Maybe I do. But uh, it's, a, well, they're all fingering with yarns. And I'm using my 2.5 millimeter Chao Gu needles. That's US size one and a half. Yes, this is it. This is it. Flop de Um, it's not gonna focus, is it? Uh, well, it's a hundred percent. Oh, a hundred grams. Uh, twenty-five percent polyamide, seventy-five percent virgin wool, two hundred and forty. No, four hundred and twenty. Four hundred and twenty meters in a hundred grams. So this is my my base color. And then I have the stripes, which are each for, for a certain singer. And um, they are just leftovers. Of course, I do have all, all of them in, in the bag, but I'm not sure if, if there is any point in showing them to you. I have some fable yarn. <clears throat> I have some opal, don't have the gold band here. I'm using the sock yarn that I made my niece's socks for this summer. And this is also something that I've knit with this summer, Novita Tico Tico, which is uh, um, a discontinued yarn. You know, different, different uh, fingering weight yarns. Maybe I'll show them all to you when I get these finished. But the idea anyway is to, uh, at the beginning of the of each episode, I'll just start knitting with this yarn. And uh, then when they start singing a specific song, I'll just <coughs> switch to, to the color or the yarn, whoever is singing. Um, it's a fun, fun project in a way, but of course uh, I only uh, have time to knit one row with each color because they're not that, the, the songs aren't that uh, long and of course I'm not a very, very uh, fast knitter. But of course, when you're using a lot of yarns, it means that at the, at, the, at the end of each episode, you'll have a lot of ends to weave in. I haven't woven in the last color from last episode because I found it a little, you know, difficult to, to do with just this much fabric after I only have one row after after this last yarn so uh, I just left it there and I'm gonna weave it in after next episode it's uh, on fr on Fridays and then of course you can watch it uh, in different uh, in a uh, internet site this is what the side of the sock looks like <laughs> so here's here are all the the uh, yarns that I've woven in. Will it be a durable sock because of all the yarn changes? 
on the slide i don't know i'm going to put in an afterthought heel a true afterthought heel i don't know how long my or in which point i'll have to do the the heel uh, i probably will measure a foot or the foot of of a sock that fits me nicely and then i'll just determine it from there where to put in the heel uh, i think i'll do the heel in this color but yeah this is a whip that i've been making for uh, i think one two three four weeks on on fridays sort of fun um uh, but just totally crazy <laughs> And then another really like weird uh, project that I have, a whip. Oh, it it's for a need, but it's not pretty. So this is the feather and fan bag bag. Looks really ugly because, I mean, in my opinion, the yarn I used here is really not good for this kind of project. It's just something that I think I got um, I got from somebody. Uh, I think it was in a bag with a lot of stuff and somebody that somebody was just giving away. This yarn is Surter Juniper, something that doesn't exist anymore. I only had one ball of it. It was 50 grams of all and 60 meters, so quite a thick yarn, thin and thick. And it's got this uh, sort of, well, different kind of textures in the yarn. Um, I'm using 5.0 millimeter DPNs in here, I think, because they were the thickest, the biggest DPNs that I happen to have. Uh, for the yarn, I should have used bigger. Uh, but yeah, this is the whole whole uh, ball of yarn, and uh, I'm going to get another ball of yarn, something that I don't even have the tag anymore. But you know, so I said this was a feather and fan bag bag. So the idea is that after you've knitted to a certain length. Uh, you have a ribbing uh, on each side, but there is a ribbing in here, but you really can't see it because the yarn is so busy. But there'll be <clears throat> a little bit of ribbing uh, at the bottom of this tube and some sort of a strap. And uh, you put in plastic bags and then you can just, you know, this will be a container for plastic bags and when you need some you'll just take it from from the opening at the bottom i'll put it in the in the cupboard so it, it won't be somewhere that people can see it it's just that i know that we have these small plastic bags like when you buy some loaves of bread or something and after you finish eating it you have the plastic bags usually i just put them in the recycle but uh now that you need to wear a mask wherever you go indoors um you need a and i use the uh, fabric masks and so i need a bag to put the mask after i've used it and that's where i sort of where these little plastic bags come in handy. Yeah, so this is something kind of hideous that I've, I've uh, worked on and that I'll finish probably like pretty soon after, after I get the beanie done, maybe. So that was all my knitting slash crochet. And since this podcast is called Nina and Knitting, uh, and I already had crochet. Well, I'll just have a little bit of sewing here too. So here's the little video clip that I took yesterday. 
Here's the shirt that I sewed for my daughter. Uh, I just finished it yesterday and I'm pretty sure she's going to want to wear it tomorrow. So I'm just going to uh, record this pretty uh, quickly. Uh, it's from this magazine, Ottobre Design Kids, from fall 212. And um, it's actually this shirt. I, I'm not too crazy about um, the, the fabrics for my daughter because you know she is she goes to school and uh, um, this is maybe a little little too childish for her but I chose some other kinds of colors and fabrics as you can see you may remember this fabric from before because I've used it in a couple of shirts before. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and then I have this, uh, so this black, black tissue with, uh, no, fabric. Tissu is French and it's fabric in English, sorry. So <laughs> this black fabric with these, um, pictures is from Eurokangas and I've used it before but this this fabric which actually is burgundy really really beautiful burgundy and the colors are totally wrong on the video I'm sorry uh, that's fall for you it's not even close to being the right uh, shade but anyway so this fabric is from uh, Popanavak I'm going to write it to you uh, on the screen. And they're very similar um, when it comes to how uh, sort of um, stretchy and, uh, you know, the feel of the fabrics is, I think, the same. Um, I made size 140 centimeters for my daughter she's not that tall yet uh, but as you know if you've seen my podcast before um, she needs bigger sizes the idea of this um, pattern is that you have these so this is a lot of fabric in here it will look nice and then uh, and then the sort of cuffs. Uh, this version, this is the first first version, and I am going to use the same pattern uh, later, but just improve it, improve the fit of it. Uh, the sleeves are way, way too narrow for my daughter. They are just, she can fit her arms in them, but, uh, they're very very narrow so for the next version i'm just going to add say two centimeters on each side of the uh, the sleeve which will add four centimeters in in the circumference uh, the length of the hem was okay uh, but uh, the sleeves uh, were too narrow yes and they're way too long um I folded it pretty oh can't can't make it well yeah at least two centimeters in the fold and they are very long for her let's see if we can get some photos of her wearing this shirt but this time of the year it's not easy <laughs> But we specifically made them long for her now because uh, if I had uh, folded it so that um, the sleeve would end at her wrist, there would have been only like this much of this black fa fabric in it. So it would have looked stupid, in my opinion. So next time I'll make this part of the sleeve shorter and of course um, well, I'll have about the same amount of the other fabric in the cuffs. 
but that way we'll we'll be able to get the length of the sleeve right um otherwise uh, the width of it was pretty okay maybe next time i'll add a centimeter or so but it was pretty okay because of course normally there's quite a bit of loose fabric uh, here in the front piece uh, the neckline well I did some stupid stuff in the neckline I should have um, cut uh, you're supposed to use ribbing in here but I didn't uh, I should have cut uh, a wider strip of fabric uh, to make the neckline so it's very like you can just see it but um, next time <laughs> I'll uh, have more fabric it's, I'll, I'll have a wider uh, finishing for the neckline it'll look nicer I think but yeah all in all uh, pretty happy with it my daughter loved really loved the idea of having just a bit of the black fabric in her shirt and I really like like this color and I'm really bummed that you can't see it on the video but yeah so the name of the the design was something mix I think uh, it was number 28 fancy mix fancy mix mm, pattern number 28 in the fall issue of 212 and another <coughs> little uh, sewing thing uh, this is from Otobre Kids fall 2015 a pair of pants for my daughter uh, this is like a very much modified version so this <coughs> model is called jogglers and you maybe <laughs> recognize this fabric I've made some pants for her from this fabric before this is actually something that I had in my fabric stash for I don't know how long I have made myself something from this fabric but that was maybe 20 years ago so this is how the fabric looks uh, on the other side no you can't focus so it's not very thick the, the fabric is not very thick but and it has pockets Mono, uh, the pattern had pockets so I thought yeah I myself like to have pockets in my pants my daughter doesn't really need them because I always put my keys in my pockets if possible but she doesn't and then there's uh, there is an elastic band here on the waist but then also <clears throat> oh she's tied a tight knot in here but anyway so there's another like cord to to um, tighten it from the waist if you need to and then uh, here uh, at the end of the, each leg you have you could have done these in in ribbing too but I just decided that they'll be nice in the same fabric as the, the pockets so if the width of this was size 160 no i have written it down so like i said i've modified it quite a bit uh, the <coughs> waist is from size 170 centimeters and then when I got to the sort of sides of the of the pieces that was from 152 centimeters uh, the length 
of the pants uh, were from 134 centimeters, so that's actually more or less uh, her size. Um, and yeah, I had to check my notes. So uh, they were a little too wide here. So before I I sewed them all together, I took some off from sort of somewhere under the the pockets and then uh, the legs were too long so uh, I took some out like four centimeters at least four centimeters out uh, before this what's this peachy color yeah and and now they're fine now they're fine for her but of course since the fabric is not very thick um, she'll have to wear something underneath which she just doesn't like because she gets hot indoors uh, or then she'll have to have uh, some other pants on top when when she goes out but yes shirts pants, you know, all the stuff that she needs at the moment. Let's just um, end with a little bit of chatter. Nothing much happening for obvious reasons, I think. Uh, we have no plans to go anywhere. We haven't been anywhere. We've just been here at home. I think we've, uh, after last episode, I think we have spent one weekend in the countryside because uh, of the weather so it, if it's <clears throat> it's gonna be cold and rainy uh doesn't really appeal to me to go in the countryside where the house is big and not that warm or all it can be heated up but just it's a lot of work for just a weekend so um, haven't been going anywhere, haven't seen anybody, um, just uh, gray as, as the weather. And I think I mentioned it last time that sort of gets to me, but I just try to put it at the back of my, my, uh, head. Um, my daughter, of course, is really waiting for Christmas and that's, Kind of like eh, I don't know about Christmas nothing much will be happening I'm not sure we'll we've always spent Christmas at my hometown almost always and I don't know now if we're gonna go there or what we're gonna do so because of the the pandemic just irritating just have to hope that next year will be better and uh, uh, one thing that I've been doing this year a bit more than on previous years is reading and that was just thing I think I was thinking that if if you liked since this is a Nina knitting podcast uh, I could talk about my reading too if you're interested so if you'd like to hear sort of what pro uh, what books i've been reading i could do that but just leave a comment down below and maybe i'll i'll add some nothing along just mentioning books maybe uh, giving my thoughts on them i don't uh, do serious literature that's not my thing at all, but uh, yeah, if you're interested, I could mention what I've been reading, but just, you know, leave me a comment. And, and otherwise, if you have any other kind of comments, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. Uh, in the description box, you'll find links to my rubber group, which has been like very, very, very quiet, but I put my show notes in there. Nowadays, I have put my show notes also in the description box. 
and that's probably why I don't get any uh, comments in the Ravelry group anymore, anymore but fine it's just copy pasting nothing it's not too much of a trouble to do that um, and uh, what else you know that's that's where you find the links down below uh, links to my projects the ones that I've mentioned yeah I think that's all for now uh, I love you and leave you I hope that um, you stay safe and you'll be able to find joy in different small things in life uh, no matter what else is happening in the world uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.